Oh, YouTube, you're always testing something. This time, though, it got people talking quite a bit. I want to get your thoughts on this because this is, I think, a very interesting use case for AI and technology. But, you know, it definitely needs to be implemented in a bit of a different way, in my opinion. But let's dive into it. I've had this one sent to me a number of different times now. It's shown up in my YouTube recommendations. You may have heard about it. But let's start with the BBC article. YouTube secretly used AI to edit people's videos. The results could bend reality. Everything I put on the screen today, I will link down below. But essentially, this article goes into detail about how YouTubers started to notice that YouTube was putting an AI filter over some of their videos. I'll just pull out a few quotes from this article here. In recent months, YouTube has secretly used artificial intelligence to tweak people's videos without letting them know or asking permission. Wrinkles in shirts seem more defined, skin is sharper in some places and smoother in others. Now, the first time I saw this was because of the YouTuber Rhett Shull, who is talked about here in the article, and he made this video where he basically compares like what a short looks like before and after this kind of like AI upscaling. He was made aware of this by a fellow YouTuber named Rick, who also has a music channel, who's very, very successful. Rhett's gonna share some evidence here, so I'm just gonna play like a snippet of this video because I think you're going to find this really interesting. Okay, I want you to watch these two videos and tell me if you see the difference between them. Given to fly, oh, yeah, that's one of your know. riffs. Mm -hmm. That has such a unique groove to it. What are you playing on the guitar during that? Both of those videos are Rick's videos. One was uploaded to Instagram and one was uploaded to YouTube Shorts. And the one that looks like an AI deepfake is here on YouTube. Obviously, this gets people talking. The BBC article points out, though, that this is not the first time people have kind of noticed this recently. Uh, there's been some complaints dating back to June. There was a Reddit post where people noticed that one of Hank Green's shorts kind of looked a little bit strange. And YouTube at this time kind of responded to all of this on Twitter. And this is from Rene Ritchie, the creator liaison over at YouTube. And he says... No gen, gen AI, no upscaling. We're running an experiment on select YouTube shorts that uses traditional machine learning to unblur, denoise, and improve the clarity in videos during processing, similar to what a modern smartphone does when you record a video, which is true. My phone definitely has these features built into it now. So this is kind of interesting that YouTube... <laughs> what I found funny about that is that people could be recording videos with those features already turned on, uploading them to YouTube shorts, and then YouTube could maybe perhaps further put a filter on it, but... Anyway, YouTube is looking on, always looking to ways to provide the best video quality and experience possible. We'll continue to take creator and viewer feedback into consideration, which they do. They absolutely do. Oh, and uh, editing Dan here. Uh, <laughs> as I was getting ready to package this video up and get it pushed out for the next day, Renee Ritchie tweets this. Creators, we've heard your feedback on YouTube's deblurring and denoising shorts tool, I guess. There's a lot of good stuff coming in that pipeline, to be honest. But if it's not for you, we're working on an opt out. Stay tuned. So uh, the rest of the video you're about to see was still me before I knew this. So keep that in mind. But I wanted to just get this in here at the most relevant point in the video, because look at that YouTube heard feedback already from the community and they're already implementing a change, which is great. I got to get rid of my outro where I said, don't worry, I think YouTube will hear your feedback. You should go leave constructive feedback. Well, <laughs> you already did that, which is awesome. I'll be honest, I, if, if we're going to be using more AI in stuff going forward, whether you watch Netflix or YouTube or whatever it might be, I don't necessarily think a lot of creators would be completely turned off by the idea that they can hit a button and get this extra bit of like picture quality that they couldn't get themselves because maybe they're just inexperienced. Maybe they're going for a look, they can't quite nail it, and you could have a tool that does that for you. I can see a lot of people feeling, you know, like that would benefit them. But there's another article that talks about this that I think brings up also a really good point. This one's from The Atlantic, YouTube sneaky AI experiment. Mr. Bravo, whose YouTube videos feature an authentic 80s aesthetic, achieved by running his videos through a VCR, wrote on Reddit that his videos look completely different to what was originally uploaded. If you fancy yourself a filmmaker and you're gonna go the extra steps to give your videos a very specific look to the point where you run them through a VCR, which by the way, those aren't super easy to by anymore and YouTube decides oh this looks like garbage and they upscale it for you without you being able to do anything about it I would feel a certain way about that that would bug me the article links to the reddit post with the videos in question so this is what it looked like when it was on YouTube after they did their post-processing. This is what originally it was supposed to look like. The difference is kind of subtle. Then you have one, I think text is always a, li a little bit easier to kind of catch this with. Did you know? And you can see the background, you can see the, the lines are nice and sharp. When you go to the original, it looks a little blurrier. It does kind of have that VCR kind of look to it. 1000%, I, I can see why this creator is so bothered by this. So not to repeat myself, but yes, absolutely. You should, YouTube should be asking us permission before they do something like this. And 
I think that they would find that this is a tool that some creators find helpful and some creators don't want to use it. Kind of like every other tool on this website. Some creators like making shorts and some don't. For me personally, I did go to school where filmmaking was part of my degree and I got to learn this art form that requires you to kind of do weird and goofy things such as run your video through a VCR in order to achieve a certain look. And that is why filmmaking is considered an art form. So it is like, to me, non-negotiable that features like this should be run through the creator first. Do you want us to do this or not? I would like to know from you in the comments, though. Is this something you would use on your YouTube shorts? If it was available for long form videos, would you use it for that? Uh, let me know if you've seen this happen to your shorts. That would also be very, very interesting. And uh, I'll see you the next time I cover a YouTube update. Uh, this one was just really fascinating. Some really interesting discussions here.